guys, Sarge here. What we're going to be talking about today is the Viridian CTL, uh, which stands for their Tactical Light. It's a part of their C5 series, the compact series for them, and it is pretty nice, guys. Um, I have been playing around with it for about a day or two now, and it, it works. Um, I have noticed how light it is just due to the polymer body that it has, but we'll get into that here in a second. It is about half the price of a Streamlight Tiro 1 HL. The difference of it, of course, the Streamlight Tiro 1 HL is 850 lumen, where this is 100 lumen. The idea behind it, I've never um, owned or used any of the Vridan products before, but the biggest idea behind this is the fact that you can put it on your more compact lights that they have rails, uh, but they don't necessarily have the same dedicated rails that the larger guns have. So a compact light option is very nice, especially when some of the other light manufacturers don't have them. And the ones that they do have, do they work that well? Uh, and that's something we're gonna look into with this is a little bit of a reliability test long-term. And then also seeing about what can it do compared to some of the other options and is it even worth the $70 or however much it is, right? Is it even worth that much? So let's take a quick look at the tabletop guys and we'll come back to, uh, to kind of give them my final thoughts on it. Hey guys, so here is the Viridian CTL. All right, here's a close up for it. It does have a polymer body um, and then the attachment pieces, unlike, I'll show you guys real quick, my Streamlight Tiro 1 HL. With the Streamlights um, and the Surefire X300 set up in a similar way, you will have different attachment pieces in here that you can unscrew and place in, whether you are running the 1913 rail or Glock rail. This does not have that. So this design is based off of the size of your rail. And as you'll see, there's on this side screwed in there, uh, but there's screws for the individual rail attachment. And what you can do when you get this, it will come on this little block. Take whatever pistol you're gonna uh, use it for and just see which rail size, it comes with three sets, see which rail size works best for you. For this kind of testing it out, I'm gonna be using it primarily uh, on my Glock 30 SF just to, to have, I've kind of been looking at putting different lights on it and having it as a compact gun with a light, and this will do for testing. So, for what I found on there is the longest rail attachment seems to work the best. So that's what we're gonna go with. One thing I want you guys to see, these pieces just slide right in. Uh, so where the attachment point is at, they slide in, and then what you do, is you'll take your screws and they tighten around that point there. Um, one thing with the light, just so you guys can see it up close, as opposed to the Streamlight, which it, the, this is kind of one of the negative points to the Streamlight, is the toggles right here are very sensitive. Uh, and what, what I've seen um, running them in courses or just seeing people I've had, you know, that have them is sometimes when they draw their pistols out, the light shines. So if you're in a situation where it is completely dark and you're maybe wanting to be a little bit discreet with drawing your pistol, having your 850 light shine might not be the most discreet thing in the world. Um, there are smaller switches out there, so you can obviously switch to those, uh, but that is kind of a negative with that, with those being um, that extended. Well, on this one, guys, it is just a push button. So the way this is designed, and this is only a 100 lumen light. So this is a 100 lumen light compared to 850 lumens. You just push the button in, and you'll see there's the strobe function. This only comes with two settings. You have the strobe, which you see here, and then the regular. Okay, and whichever one you want to set it to, the way you do that is you click when the light is on, you click both buttons. Okay, you see each side has a button. You click both at the same time, that will switch it to strobe, switch it to regular, and then once you decide, okay, hey, that's what I want to run, just turn the light off by clicking one side, 
and you're good to go. The battery compartment is right out here in the front. So if your battery dies, you don't have to even take the light off the pistol to change the battery, which is actually pretty cool. Um, if you guys have messed with the stream lights, that's you have to take it off. Is it that big of a deal? No, but it's, it's kind of cool that they offer that, okay? Um, so here is just kind of the up close tabletop. One thing that I will say is it seems to be constructed well from just getting it out of the box and kind of looking at it, but we'll obviously take a closer look. So let's move on to the next part. Hey guys, so we just did a tabletop looking a little bit more in detail to it. Uh, one of the things I will say, I am a fan of the act uh, the the buttons to activate the light. That is nice. Um, the only thing I'm not a fan of is they are constant on, constant off, not momentary. That is kind of a for me at least running a tactical light, but a self defense light. I, I want it to have momentary on, momentary off, not a dedicated. Um, on off especially even in a home defense scenario I, I want it to have momentary on momentary off what applications could this work for so I think right out of the gate does it compare to a light like the Streamlight Turo 1HL or the Surefire X300 no those are two different two different fields uh, for light would this work for individuals that run compact guns they want to put a light on it and maybe they're in areas that are, even when it's dark out, it's still illuminated. Yeah, I, I think this would work. Would this work for zero to 10 feet engagements to get positive identification? I think so. I, I definitely don't see an issue with that at all. Um, but then if we start trying to have it do different sort of uh, duty positions that the stream lights and the surefires kind of market I that I think that's where you're gonna see that the the uh, lumen output is definitely gonna hinder you there but what we're gonna do with this guys uh, we're going to run through some low light shooting drills with it in the future we're going to kind of see a long-term reliability of it um, the the polymer housing is really nice especially on a compact gun like this Glock 30 but even if you had it on a smaller gun than the Glock 30 just how light it is right that's pretty nice but does that transfer to it still remaining reliable I don't know we'll see um, I, I used to have a laser back before I got educated uh, but I used to have I, I used to run a laser and it had a polymer body and it did not work that well um, so I'm not I'm not saying that this is the case for Viridian it wasn't even a Viridian laser okay it was another company um, but we'll we'll see I I've read some positive things about them, but like I said, I've never had one myself. So we will see how this works, guys. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have ever used a Viridian product or if you have any experience with them. Um, and then also let me know what kind of stuff you'd like to see this light do or what kind of applications do you think this light could be used for. If you guys have any questions, you can find me on Instagram at Shooting with the Sarge or put your question down in the comment description below. As always, guys, stay tuned for more. Sarge out. Oh, <laughs>